What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. I'm gonna bring a brand new stock to the channel today, one we've never covered before. Now, if you watch the top 10 cybersecurity stocks, this one was highly requested from the audience, from the community. You guys asked me to do a deeper dive on this stock, on this company, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. I think what's interesting when you think about cybersecurity is historically we've been very reactive. In other words, we find a threat, we use software, some kind of solution to try to find a threat. Of course, we have, we have solutions that are trying to block threats, but we've been very reactive in the sense that we find something, then we correct it and, and go about trying to find a solution. More and more, we're becoming more proactive. What I mean by that, you think of like training, you think of no before. No before is cybersecurity awareness training, to train your employees on what not to do so they don't click the wrong email you know, the wrong phishing email in the first place. This solution today, this company today, is also more in that proactive space because we're gonna talk about vulnerability management. So this is software that allows you to assess your IT solution, your current cybersecurity solutions, to see where there's potential risk, potential threats, and vulnerabilities so you can correct them proactively before anything happens. So I'm gonna go deep dive into this company, into this stock, and then towards the end of the video, I'll talk about the valuation, the stock price, and if I'm going to add it to my portfolio or not. This is gonna be a great video. I encourage you to watch it from start to finish. You're gonna to wanna to see it. Stay tuned. So first, what is vulnerability management? What does it even mean? Vulnerability management is the ongoing regular process of identifying, assessing, reporting on, and managing and basically fixing any cyber vulnerabilities across endpoints, workloads, and systems. Typically, a security team will leverage a vulnerability management tool, that's what we're gonna talk about today, to detect vulnerabilities and utilize different processes to patch or to fix the problems they find. And there's something called a CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System. You probably will never need to know that again. <laughs> kind of like if you took calculus, you might not need that again, depending on your profession. <laughs> but the CVS, CVSS score, there's a severity ranking that goes basically from zero all the way to a 10. So from none to critical. And there's really five steps to vulnerability management into that life cycle. The first is you're gonna assess, then you're gonna prior, prioritize. And the tool that we're gonna talk about today does that for you. It, it basically prioritizes the most severe threats so you can focus on those first and work your way down. Number three is act, then you're gonna reassess and you're gonna improve. And that's the cycle that you know, IT professionals are going through all the time. If you're working in cybersecurity, you're assessing, you're prioritizing what you need to get done first, you're making action, you're taking action, you're reassessing again and you're improving. You're constantly doing that and you're trying to stay one step ahead of those cyber criminals that are everywhere and that, that those threats are just getting worse and worse and worse and our job is to try to stay in front of them. All right, so the company we're gonna cover today is Tenable Holdings, ticker is T-E-N-B, so 10B. The problem we solve, digital transformation, that's a big buzzword of course, right? Has led to an explosion of new technologies, connected devices and computing platforms from IT to cloud to internet of things to OT, this complex computing landscape is the modern cyber attack surface. The tools and processes of yesterday are being used to solve today's problems. Built and designed for the old era of IT when cyber attack surface was a static laptop, desktop, or on-premises server. As a result, organizations struggled every step seeing their assets, detecting weaknesses, prioritizing issues, measuring risk, and comparing to peers. All the things I just mentioned are exactly what Tenable helps businesses do. Preventing them from confidently managing and reducing cyber risks, the digital era requires a new approach. So if you look at their solutions, I, don't, I won't read all of these, but essentially they've got a platform with different solutions that includes so Tenable.ep, comprehensive risk-based vulnerability management solution enables you to determine the cyber exposure of all your assets on every platform. That's really important. And there's different ones here. They've got one for cloud security. They've got Tenable Ad, that's for Active Directory. They've got OT, so this is for industrial. And then this Tenable Lumen is interesting. Measure cyber exposure and benchmark against your peers. Transform vulnerability data into meaningful business insights based on cyber risk. So I think that's pretty cool being able to compare yourself to your peers because you think you might think you have a great solution, but then you look at one of your peers like, oh my goodness, they have a way better solution. Maybe we need to up the ante 
and do a little bit better on our end as well. So Investor Deck, we help organizations confidently answer the question, how secure are we? I think that's really good. So Tenable at a glance, category leader in strategically important cyber exposure market, holistic approach to cyber exposure, focusing on measuring and managing cyber risk, leveraging core competency in VM to deliver an integrated unified workspace. So these guys are number one in market share for vulnerability management. I'm gonna show you some competition here in a little bit. 40,000 customers, 60% of the Fortune 500. I think a lot of people don't realize how big these guys are. They're headquartered in Maryland. They've got 40% of the global 2000 as well. Some of you have probably never even heard of Tenable Holdings. So revenue, they got 149 million uh, Q4 revenue. That was 26% revenue growth. Now we'll talk about that. 26%, not bad, not great. Let's talk about the valuation later. Now here's a, a big positive. Their Q4 recurring revenue, 95% of their revenue is recurring. We like that as investors because it gives us predictability into the future of the revenues of the company. It's much simpler to analyze a company when they've got recurring revenue, especially 95%. They also have really good margins, 82% for their Q4 non-GAAP gross margin. And then their unlevered free cash flow was $22.4 million. So unique approach to secular growth opportunity. I'm gonna make my camera a little smaller. Best of breed strategy in cyber exposure, data science and data analytics, prioritization, benchmarking, high growth recurring model, one platform unifying data across network, Cloud, identity, OT, DevOps, environments, everything. Your entire IT solution, they can take care of all of that. Attractive margin profile with operating leverage. So use of tech is exploding in the modern infrastructure. So this is really good. You can see they've got the web API, there's cloud containers, virtual machines, all these different things. And then underneath that, you've got desktops, you've got laptops, servers, you need to protect all that. And this is gonna give you insight into where you might have vulnerability issues so you can try to correct those before it's too late, right? Before it's too late. Best of breed strategy in vulnerability management. So number one in vulnerability management market share, that's 21% share in device. That's, that's pretty good. Number one in vulnerability coverage and then leader in zero day research. So this one's key guys. Tenable is an industry and market share leader in vulnerability management. So Gartner Peer Insights Choice for Vulnerability Assessment, they've won a bunch of awards. So you got Frost and Sullivan, but you can see this Frost Radar. So Global Vulnerability Management, hopefully you can see this. Maybe I'll zoom in and, and give you another screen over here. Tenable is up here on the top right. Now somebody asked me in the comments, I can't remember who it was, they asked, hey, can you compare Rapid7 to Tenable? The video, this video today is not necessarily gonna do that, it's gonna be focused on Tenable, but you can see Rapid7 is probably the next best solution. Um, they are a little bit different in a couple ways, but they do compete in, in a lot of these, these areas. Tenable is the clear leader. When you think of innovation and growth, that index combined, they're really best of breed. And I like to invest in best of breed cloud solutions. So I think of best of breed endpoint security. I think of CrowdStrike. When I think of best of breed for DDO, DDoS, I think of Cloudflare. When I think of best of breed, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Best of breed for cybersecurity awareness training, no before best of breed for vulnerability management, it's gonna be Tenable Holdings. But the question you have is, is this stock a buy? Should you add it to your portfolio? Stay tuned, I will get to that part soon. So the digital attack service keeps expanding because it's becoming more and more complex. You know, is my cloud infrastructure secure? Well, we can help with that. Are my containers and workloads configured properly? What is the security hygiene of my remote, remote workforce? How vulnerable are my industrial control systems? All these questions. Do I have the right access permissions to the, the right people, the right employees? So you got the modern attack surface, infrastructure as code, public cloud security, digital identity, all these different things. More complexity equals more attacks, more point solutions, more vendors, more integrations, more confusion. You know, think of... Think of a CTO, a CIO having to manage all this and making all this work and, and run correctly. And it's your job, if there's an attack, it's on you. I mean, it's, it's a big undertaking and certainly a job <laughs> that I wouldn't want in this day and age, guys. And you can see there's been a lot of, of really good companies that have, been, um, that have been hacked in the last few weeks. And the reality is, is that probably anything is, is hackable. And so that's kind of scary. And how do you constantly defend yourself? We're always trying to improve and, and try to be one step ahead of these, these cyber attacks. But there's a lot of money and resources being pumped at cyber criminals and cyber attacks. 
And you have to do everything you can as, as an enterprise to protect your data, to protect your intellectual property, all those different things. And this is what, you know, this is what Tenable Holdings is trying to do, show you where you might be most vulnerable so you can do your best to protect it. So they really have this, this whole platform, cyber exposure data analytics platform. So you got Tenable products today, they've made some acquisitions, you can see the logos up here. So they've got vulnerability management, they've got web and API security, they got OT security, active uh, directory identity, infrastructure as a code, and then they have exposure for CSPM and, and, and other things as well. What you really need to understand here you know, just to, to break it down in, in the simplest terms I can, this, this company, it's software as a service. You, you pay a service for a fee, and depending on you know, how many different assets you want to protect, it costs more. We're going to talk about the pros and cons later of this company and, and really of Tenable Holding Stock. But they have these different products that can look at different pieces of the business. You can even compare yourself to peers and just see you know, where there might be the most threat, the most risk, so you can try to, you know, take charge and fix it before it's too late, like I mentioned earlier. Unified exposure platform. So they've got web application, analytics, cloud container, IT. You can kind of see this whole thing. They're trying to take care of all that for you. So total addressable market, let's get into some of this. So Tenable, they, they call themselves, or they, they think that they have about $25 billion in cyber exposure, TAM, or total addressable market. And it's broken down on the bottom, identity is $5 billion, cloud container, $10 billion, vulnerability management, $5 billion, application, $3 billion, and then the ICSOT, $2 billion. Now, the market cap is roughly six six and a half billion dollars We'll take a look at that later. So you can say, well, there's lots of room for them to grow. Of course, you saw, too, on the slide previously, there's a lot of competition in this space as well. So... You know, you have to always kind of take this with a grain of salt. Yeah, it's $25 billion, but they don't have 100% market share either, right? So we have, to, we have to think about that. So their growth strategy, they're going to acquire new enterprise platform customers. They're going to expand asset coverage, invest in technology and expand use cases, try to grow that net-based retention rate. Now, their net-based retention rate, guys, is about 110%. Not terrible, but not, you know, hyper growth like we see some of these other businesses. And they want to explore acquisition opportunities as well. I always think of uh, M&A, mergers, acquisitions. So they're trying to buy, uh, buy up other, uh, other companies in this space as well to kind of grow that way. So both organically and inorganically. The management team I looked at briefly, it looks pretty solid overall. Um, their co-founder and CTO seems like a really bright guy. I watched a couple of videos on him. Financial overview, I'm going to go through this really quick as well. And then next, we'll talk about the stock price. I'll give you my opinions if I'm going to buy the stock or not. So rapid revenue growth, eh, that's questionable. Maybe. Strong land and expand dynamic. You know, it's not bad, but I don't know if I'd call it strong. Balanced and diversified business mix. I agree with that. I mean, they do have lots of different modules and segments. Balanced philosophy between growth and profitability. Okay. So rapidly growing, high quality CCB and revenue. So CCB is uh, calculated current build billings. You can see on the left-hand side, so annual prepaid versus multi-year contracts. You got 29% here. 95% recurring revenue. So you can see this ramp up from 2019 to 2021. This is revenue in millions, so 354 million in 2019 to 541 million in 2021. And then this quarter over quarter or year over year quarter growth in Q4 from 2020 to 2021 was 26%. Is that great growth? You know, not really. Is it acceptable? You know, probably. Let's kind of break that down here in, in a couple minutes. Attractive compensation of revenue, I would agree with this is really strong. It went from 94% to 95% recurring revenue. That's really good. I couldn't even find what that other 5% is, maybe some sort of um, service fee or consulting fee that they do or something, but I couldn't find that anywhere. But essentially, it's, it's SaaS, software as a service, 95% recurring revenue. Re revenue by geography, you've got uh, EMA, EMEA is 26%, APAC. So Asian Pacific is 11%. So basically Europe, 26%, Asia, 11%, and America is, is, is the largest at 63%. So there is some room maybe for international growth. Landing higher valued customers, new logo enterprise platform customers. So 2018 to 2021, you can see they've grown pretty decently. They actually had some, some contraction uh, from 2019 to 2020. I'm not sure what that's all about. So this is 100,000 or more accounts yeah, LTM. And you can see from 2018, it has grown. You want to see this and it's grown every single, every single quarter. So that's actually really solid. Um, new logo enterprise platform customers over here was a little bit of a dip, but on the, on the right-hand side, going for those hundred thousand dollar plus accounts, you've seen steady growth 
for several years growing here. So multiple ways to, to land and expand. We talked about this a little bit earlier. So new logos, they've got upsells, more assets and applications. And essentially they want to use this Nessus as a cost effective on-ramp to larger enterprise platform. So Nessus Professional upgrades to either TSC, the on-prem or the cloud version. So it's important to know that you can do on-prem, cloud or hybrid with these guys. Centralized data and reporting, APIs and so on. You can kind of get a good snapshot there. So operating leverage, you can see negative 12% in 2019 and now it's at 8%. The unlevered uh, free cash flow margin profile, you can see 14 to 15%. So that's, that's positive growing in a little bit. And then we've got some financials here we can look at as well. I wanna go into a couple things and, and break down some thoughts on, this, on the company on the stock. And then I'm gonna go into the valuation and I'm gonna let you know if I'm gonna buy the stock or not. Okay, so checking out here Fidelity, Tenable Holdings Inc. Right now it's a $6.28 billion small cap according to Fidelity. Now it is close to all time highs here. It's trading around $57.29 a share. Of course, it doesn't have a P ratio, so they've got no earnings. We talked about free cash flow, but not earnings. And it doesn't have a dividend. Uh, it's up 57% over the past 52 weeks. And if you look at a chart, you can see it's, it's done pretty well here. You know, of course, the problem is it was, you know, 10, 15% lower, not so long, around $50. Now, this one didn't get hit nearly as bad because it's not quite as expensive. It's not a high flyer. What we really have to do is look at the, the valuation metrics and say, is the growth acceptable for the premium I'm paying for this stock? And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so valuation. So the EV NTM on Tenable is a 9.2X. It's actually slightly higher than that because the price is a little higher since I did the math on that, but it's trading roughly 9.2. Now that's not crazy expensive, but it's also not cheap. To give you an example, something like a Toast is a 3.5. And if you look at something like a Sentinel-1, it's a 27.3X, okay? So you've got a big range there. Sentinel one though is growing at a huge clip. It's hyper growth. This is certainly not. And I just talked about toast. If I looked at the metric on toast, I might even say that toast is a better buy at a 3.5 X than maybe tenable here, you know, trading closer to a uh, 9.2 X. So that, you know, for 27% growth, that's not necessarily cheap. It is a good company though. Let's dig a little further and look at some more metrics and then I'll give you my thoughts. So the rule of 40 is a 46%. Okay, so not the quick and dirty method, but if you calculate the rule of 40, it's 46, so that's pretty good. And they're actually trying to strive towards a rule of 50 number, which would be even better. Okay, so I mentioned earlier net dollar retention. So their net dollar retention is 110%. 110% is not bad. We want that number as high as possible. Essentially what it means is you're keeping your customers and you're expanding your footprint within those customers. You're selling more products, you're bringing in, so you're bringing new customers, you're keeping your current customers, you're selling more products into the customers you already have, right? So 110% solid, and some companies have you know 160%, which is really, really good. Some people have under 100%, which means they're actually compressing, they're not growing, and, and customers are canceling modules and the churn rate's high and things like that. So 110%, Definitely not bad, not the highest when you look at software as a service, but a respectable number. Okay, so I'm on wide charts. Let's look at price to sales ratio. You can see right, right now we're at 11.3. You can see back in February, we're at 8.9. You can see some of these numbers. So we're running kind of hot, you know, all time highs in the stock. Let's look at a three year and a five year and just see where, where it's at historically. So you can look back here, 2019, we were actually in the sixes. 6.6 .6, January 4th, 2019. Uh, of course, the pandemic, it sold off March 18th, 2020. It was a 4.5. And now we're trading 11.7. The lowest it looks like it got to was February 23rd. It got to about 8.8 .8 price to sales. I can argue that maybe eight or under, probably pretty attractive. 11.3, meh, maybe it's getting a little bit expensive. Okay, so let's look at the last earnings report. They had Decent revenue growth year over year, 26%, and their revenues beat by about $5 million. Management also gave us 2022 guidance, and they guided 20% or above, but we are expected to see some margin pressure due to some recent acquisitions. So for their large accounts with over $100,000, 
in revenue, annual contract value, we've got 1,095 accounts at the end of, of Q4. We also saw margins earlier. The margins are pretty solid and they have 95% recurring revenue, which is a positive as well. But here's a quote from the earnings call. Now, in terms of metrics, Underpinning our strong financial performance, we added 562 new enterprise platform customers in the quarter, which is a record for us and up from the 460 we added in Q4 last year. We also had success with large deals as we added 100 net new six-figure customers in the quarter, which is up from 66 in the same period last year. Similar to new enterprise platform customers, the number of net new six-figure customers we added in Q4 was our largest ever in a single quarter and brings the total number of new enterprise platform customers spending over 100,000 per annum to almost 1,100. So full year guidance, 2022, expecting billings of 750 to $760 million in revenue between 662 and $670 million, both reflecting around 22 to 24% year over year growth. Non-GAAP operating income is expected to be 40 to $45 million, which would result in non-GAAP operating margin of 6 to 7%, though that could be conservative as well. Management did, did comment on Rule 40 and that they want to maintain Rule 40 score and they'd like to improve it to a Rule of 50 company. So they're at about 46. They want to get that to a 50. Here's a quote from management. As discussed earlier, we achieved the Rule 40 in Q4 and the full year for 2021. 20, so we believe making investments in the face of strong demand will position us well for continued growth and success. Long term, we are confident in our ability to continue to balance growth with profitability and become a rule of 50 company. In summary, we're delighted with the results of the quarter and feel really good about the outlook that we're providing today. Okay, so we're at $6.28 billion market cap like we covered earlier. Okay, look at this $6.28 billion total addressable market, $25 billion, assuming no, no competition. You've got, you know, price to sales. We just looked at sitting at really the highest levels it's been. We look at the EVNTM. It's not crazy high, but it's also not crazy low. I think the best way to compare this company, I feel it's similar to a, a Viva, like in early stages of Viva. So you think of Viva, Viva has a PE ratio. They have earnings. They're still growing at a decent clip, but it's not really hyper growth. And if you look at their EV and NTM on Viva, it's something around 12.5. So Viva is a little bit more of a premium, but Viva, you could argue, is a much better company. It's just more established, has better metrics overall when you think of balance sheet profitability, things like that. So that's a good comparison, I think. And for me personally, guys, if I were going to buy this stock, I'm going to show you a chart here. I'll tell you exactly where I would look at the, the stock. So I think this is a great example of why I feel it's really important to use technical analysis, even if you're a long-term investor. So I'm a long-term investor. Fundamental analysis is most critical, but I think it's good to look at a chart just to see where this thing came, came from and where it might go and just to see if it's running hot. So this is a one-year chart with daily candles, and you can see that we saw resistance here around $59. So it got up to this, what is this, R2, and it kind of got resistance and it, it pulled back. But if you look at the moving averages here, you know, this, this was probably a buy down here when we got to, what is this here, uh, 43 bucks or whatever. Do I want to pay 57 when it was just $43 basically a month ago? Me personally, no. Where would I buy the stock? Probably 45 or below where it was. You can see here it was 44.61, came back 44.45, came back 43.19. You know, back here in uh, what, August 2021, it was a $40 stock. July, it was a $38 stock. So do I want to pay 57? It's probably up for a reason. Maybe it keeps going higher. But if I'm an investor and I'm trying to get into this stock, I probably wait for it to come back at least closer to these moving averages up here, maybe to the P, that's 50, $51. So probably $50 or less dollar cost average, but even better 45 or under if you see it. But it's always hard because you might not get that price anytime soon if the market keeps running hotter. But I have to look at it and say, what is this thing worth for the growth? How do you value this type of stock? We did our best using the EVM, EVNTM you know, revenue, using price to sales because we don't have a PE ratio and things like that. Looking at the free cash flow and some of the other metrics, the growth, the net, the net base retention rate, the margins, the recurring revenue, you add all that together, I probably would uh, probably would wait 
to get a little bit better price personally. But I wanted to bring this stock to you. I wanted to bring the due diligence to you. Get it on your radar, on your watch list, and maybe an opportunity will present itself. I think this is best of breed when you think of vulnerability management. So for certain portfolios, if you're trying to build out a best of breed, you know, cybersecurity type portfolio, this would be in there. If you're creating an ETF for cybersecurity, I would add Tenable Holdings to that ETF if it were me managing that fund. So hopefully these videos are helpful, guys. The way you can help me is hit that like button, drop me a comment, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, share the video, watch another Fired Up Wealth YouTube video right after this video. That, that helps me out a lot, guys. So I appreciate your time and attention. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.